Riverbed R-V-B-D. How'd I get this name? You told me. Kenny from Florida asked me about this stock in the lightning round, and I didn't have a great answer. That's okay. I then looked into it, did the work because it stumped me on the lightning round, and I came back and realized, hey. House of pleasure. On Mad Money, you report, I decide. The company came public on September 21st. It's already up three smackers from where it actually started trading, as opposed to where it was priced. A solid 20%, but that's no problem. I, if you, I, it's up so big from where it was priced. I mean, I, I can't even use that as a, as a benchmark. Divix jumped up 22% from where it's IPO priced on that first day. I don't think you've missed nearly as much as you might see when you look at the chart of Riverbed. This is a company that's managing to do the impossible. It's beating Cisco at its own game. You simply don't do that. If you like Cisco, as I do, you will love Riverbed. Insofar as anyone can love a piece of paper that loosely represents a chunk of a business. I think this is a great speculative tech stock. Remember, I'm emphasizing speculative because when we talk on this show about stocks, Cisco's not speculative, okay? This is speculative. It's good speculative because it's a way to play the current rally. But if you're going to own a stock, you need to understand first what the company does and why the stock should go up. I always like to say you need to be able to explain in the most explicit way possible to someone who knows nothing about the market what Riverbed does. If you can't and you pull the trigger, shame on you. One of the big problems faced by growing corporations is they have to extend their wide area networks, known as WANs, over large areas. That means they end up keeping all their servers in one place. It's good for saving money, but bad for having a speedy, reliable network. And any modern business needs to have a strong network or will get crushed by its better competitors. Enter Riverbed. They make a line of network appliances called Steelhead, often confused with me. Which, to put a long story short, makes it possible to have a fast, wide area network with good performance, even over long distances. With Riverbed's technology, companies can have cheap centralized networks that have all the performance and speed of much more expensive decentralized one. Main thing you need to know, this saves big business a lot of money. And the best thing is that Riverbed stuff is the best. It's the best of breed. That my tech sources assure me that the competitors have absolutely nothing anywhere near as good as Riverbed's gear. Riverbed does have some competitors. But again, like Mason Storm, Steven Seagal's excellent stage name, they have a superior state of mind and a superior attitude with the added advantage of having a superior product. Right now, Riverbed isn't even profitable, but that's a good thing from our perspective because then we get in on the ground floor. Even though they haven't hit profitability yet, the revenue growth has been absolutely staggering. We love accelerated revenue growth. These guys have it. Balance sheet thing of beauty. The stock should go up as speculators get interested, especially now that Cisco, Juniper, and Citrix, all much bigger players, are trying to edge in on Riverbed's game. But as of now, their technology, I think, is vastly inferior. I need to repeat how important this is. Massive networking companies with huge R&D budgets can't come up with technology that is as good as riverbeds. And for me, that's the most important fact out there. Uh, riverbeds also got a huge cache of unrecognized revenue that should be great for the numbers. They've been licensing their WAN management software to Hewlett Packard and to NEC, who just embedded into their network appliances. They got a deal with McData, hey, soon to be brocade, where Riverbed lets them rebrand Steelhead, their premier device, as a McData product. But here's the thing. Riverbed's only recognized $492,000 in revenue from Hewlett Packard so far. It hasn't recognized a penny from the deals with NEC and McData. Now, we know that they should get a lot of money from these deals in the future. We know these deals have happened, but that the money hasn't really hit the numbers yet. And that's why I think the estimates for Riverbed are conservative. And it should, when we see the next quarter, blow everyone away. Companies got momentum from the recent IPO, and it should get even more mojo as people come to realize that this little David of a company has been able to take down, at least in a small way, a Goliath like Cisco. How about if you're less biblical, more historical? It's like the 300 Spartans holding off a million or two Persians. 
first two days of the Battle of Thermopylae. Long term, I think Riverbed will do a little better than those Spartans. I know, I know what you're thinking. He bored me with that wide area network. Do you know when I started thinking about doing this piece after Kenny called, I said, you know, this is not what people want to hear on a Friday. They don't want to hear about some wide area network. But you know what? In the end, I'm about trying to make you money. I have to let you know what the company does. I can't just say, you know what, I'm not going to talk about Riverbed because I have to do this very difficult explanation of networking. Because then I'm just a joker. Man, I'm too old to be a joker. I'm 62 years old. Bottom line, Riverbed is the definition of sexy, unlike the 62-year-old. It's a hot stock. I think it's going to get even hotter. I think you want to ride this pony higher. But remember, limit orders. It's a thinly traded stock. It's unseasoned. Don't get mad at me. I'm just telling you that if you pay up, you will two days later feel like a rope-a-dope.